feel the rhythm in your body. Oh, the next part started, didn't it? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the walkthrough. Let's start exploring the Exnod Fortress. First with a tattle. This is a fortress corridor, an elevator connects it to the lower floors. I guess this fortress extends pretty far beneath the surface of the moon, huh? I mean, I hate Grotus, but I gotta give them some props for a pretty cool evil hideout. <laughs> oh, and uh, you can tell in the background there's a couple of constellations there, like a, a chomp. And uh, by the time I get to the other side, there will should be up, there'll be another one there. That looks like a fire flower. And I didn't mean to get in battle with you. I didn't mean that at all. In fact, I already battled you, so I'm out of here. <laughs> Well, I battled a variation of... Whoa, that was close. Oh yeah, I passed by this because um, it's it needs an elevator key. We're locked out of using the elevator, and the elevator key is down the hallway. So let's just get that and avoid him. There we go. You know, they, they always have like a little bit of... Like they have a range to them, if only how, how far they can go. Um, watch the floor panels there, the, the ones that lit up, because... This room looks like it was meant to store something. It's booby trapped, I think. Not to totally change the subject or anything, but how's your memory, Mario? If you have trouble recalling the full path, you ought to maybe leave and re-enter. So, yeah, if you go back out, and if you go back in, you'll actually find a different configuration for the floor panels. Well, usually. Yeah, cause, like, see, there's a different one there. I think there's, like, three, four different configurations of them. Oh, but if you touch the wrong floor panel, you get electrocuted and sent back to the start of this room. So, uh, Super Shroom, uh, let's see, it's, yeah, right here, here we go up, I mean, we go down, then we go back up when we hit the corner, and inside here, it contains the elevator key, and now the floor is no longer booby-trapped, so if you got a pattern that you weren't able to access this box before with, now you can, because none of the floor tiles now are electrocuted, so, there you go, alright, move, uh oh, gotta get past him in a tighter corner, okay, <laughs> It was easier on the other side because, you know, I had more room to run, but not here. Oh. Mm. Elevator music 2.0. It's a slight more, excite, more exciting version of the elevator music that some business owners use for their elevators, and it's not all that much more exciting. <laughs> Uh, in this room, gear is under repair. Yeah, you need a gear to fill the slot there, and you get some pretty good prizes if you get this sucker running. But, we also need some other stuff to get it running as well. Uh, but we aren't going to have that until a little bit later, so let's move on for now. Over on this side, uh, stop please, stop please, okay. Uh, there is an access code panel here. We of course don't have this. Um, the code is the same, actually, no matter what, as far as I can tell. I don't ever remember getting the code... Oh, he just teleported back over there. I don't remember the code ever being any different. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's always the same, no matter what. So if you have the access code, you could just jump in there. Uh, but anyway, there's nothing for us right now until you have the access code, which I'm not going to spoil until I show you where it is. So let's just go over to sub-level 2 now. Uh, let's... One here. Start the rooms from left to right. Well, sort of. Oh, X not PhD. Uh, what? The, the, I could have. Didn't you hear me swing the hammer? That. What? How did. Oh, whatever. <laughs> X not PhD. Tattle. And that's an X not PhD. Guys like this invent all the annoying things we fight. Max HP is 9, attack is 4, and defense is 0. He likes to throw beakers of chemicals. The chemicals do all sort, all kinds of stuff, like making things huge or burning people. He may also use potions to heal himself or make himself impossible to hit. Exot's PHEs are really annoying, so take them out before they boost themselves. Yeah, they probably are the most uh, dangerous version of the Exnauts overall, in, in my opinion. I mean, even more than the Elite Exnauts, because they have the ability to, like, say, make themselves dodgy like that, or... Like this one heals. Yep, they they have tons upon tons of stuff, and maybe I shouldn't be attacking the one that's dodgy. I just did that because it has lower HP, but I didn't really think that one through. Dang it! I hope they don't heal again. Yep, they are. <laughs> yeah, there's a type of healing where one heals both, and then there's a type of healing where one heals one. The one that heals both is one that's it, it splits it into five the one that heals you know one always does ten so yeah 
there's variations to that same potion. It's like they're sharing uh, potions, but yeah, they've got a lot of moves. <laughs> right now, they're not really doing much of anything but healing, and that's... That's not really conducive to victory. <laughs> so I, I guess I'm getting sort of lucky on these critters. I'm sure you're going to see more of their attacks later, either you know as I battle more of them or as you play against them yourself, but yeah. Alright, moving on. Oh, uh, actually these notes have changed, didn't they? Uh, let me check. There you go. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Notice of new seminar topic. Galloping towards an era of risk-free potions. Participation is not voluntary. <laughs> yeah, this is the room where um, Peach transformed herself invisible. Yeah. We're leaving the lab. Always do your all-point inspection in the loudest voice possible. I have some stuff to do, so I'm not coming into work tomorrow, and that's that. Keep the workspace orderly. All right. It's so... Oh yeah, you're really easy to dodge. You only throw potions. They just like stand in one spot and they just just throw potions. Oh, you might uh, be able to notice on these floor panels is that they're ever so slightly different. Although it might be difficult for you to tell depending on how the contrast of your screen is. But can you can you tell that right here? Like you can see this one's good and then this one's good and then this one all the way up to the corner is good. Oh, Goombella got shocked. Um, you can also see the solution to the this puzzle room at the... Uh, like right there, look at that board on the back wall that shows you the safe floor panels. Uh, hit this uh, sleep. Oh, dang. item inventory is full. Well, I'm dropping the courage shell. That's like my least used type of item ever. <laughs> oh, there. Card key. Whoa. All right. Bye bye, courage shell. You won't really be missed. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, now let's go to the other side of this corridor and start clearing out the room. Oh, whoa! That's dangerous. Oh, this room here. This is the room that has the, the gear, but this isn't why uh, this room is especially interesting. I'm, I mean, that's... Ah, what am I saying? This isn't why um, I had that reaction for this room. Because there's a teleporter here. Listen to the music in this next area here. Where the heck are we? Sound familiar? Well, guess where we are. We're in the underground city back at Rogueport. We're in the beneath Rogueport. The Xnauts use that thing to come here from the moon. Yep, we are over here. Check it out. So yeah, that's 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 this is also a way to get back over to the moon. But uh, more importantly, this this explains the story of how the X knots got here. But although I kind of question how the teleporter would have got here to begin with, without someone like sneaking on here from a ship, you know, like flying in here from outer space, uh, landing, sneaking in there to build a teleporter somehow without anyone noticing. And, <laughs> and locking the room so no one could get it on the other side. Because, yeah, that tel that teleportation room was indeed the room that um, that I said we would find out what is inside there later that was locked. Yeah, that was the one. Now we know what, what is in each of those rooms. Uh, this room here appears to be the place where they create the yuxes. I'm assuming, because, you know, there's a bunch of baby yuxes over there. And he put, throws those potions way too slow. And that uh, vent right there, way too obvious. <laughs> um, over here, uh, to get the gear, you want to fall down another one on that side. But over here is something you'll probably find more interesting, actually. Well, maybe not more interesting. I'm, I'm right on the little edge between the openings. <laughs> if you fall down this floor panel and end up inside uh, Peach's changing room here... <laughs> Eight bit Mario time, as well as eight bit your partner time. Uh, if you go into your part, uh, your party here. Yep, you can actually see all your partners in their eight bit versions. That is a pretty dang cool Easter egg, you know. Also, along with the um, music and whatnot, you can't use their abilities though. Like I'm pressing the X button to shoot coops across the floor, does not work whatsoever. Sadly, oh. Uh, you can mess around in this room while you are 8-bit 
Today's code is 014029. I have this written down already, so I don't have to, um, I don't have to say, I mean, I don't have to write it down now, so I'm good to go with that. And I also have this written down, how to activate the switch, left, right, middle, do not forget. All right, I won't, because I have it written down. <laughs> and over here, if you go back in, you can't actually change back, so how do you change back anyway? Well, you just leave the room. Oddly. <laughs> Maybe that's like a reference to, um, like, resetting stuff when you leave and come back into rooms or something like that. Uh, I'm also going to show you something else, if, I, if I'm able to demonstrate this uh, with that, is if you have a partner outside of that curtain and you transform into that, um, you'll actually be able to see them transform instantly and it'll kind of ruin the illusion of the curtain, so to speak, of transforming behind that. Like you see, she's up there. Now I'm going to... Look at that! She transforms instantly the moment that I press the A button on the curtain. <laughs> oh, and uh, as you can tell, your color also changes uh, depending on what badges you have equipped. Like, I'll take off the Luigi en emblem and you turn into uh, Wario. Uh, equip badges, let's go over to Wario and then go back over to L emblem. Oh boy, there it is. And here you are as Luigi. Oh, and also, uh, if you just press start, you can also see yourself uh, right there in the inventory screen. Uh, yeah, you can see all the different sprites of yourself that way as well. Um, you know, well, I mean, in your inventory, blah, blah, blah. You get what I'm saying here in that you can also... It, that it transforms sprites everywhere is what I'm saying, including in the menus. Okay, now if I take off the L emblem, you can see regular old classic Mario once again. With all the colors look a tad brighter than what I'm used to. <laughs> Might be because I'm using, uh, like, non-S-video or non-SCART uh, cables, you know, with the NES or whatnot. Anyway, oh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Running. <laughs> no offense, but I'm running. I'm, there's a lot, oh, I, no. There's a, there's a lot of you and yeah, it's gonna take a long time. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna move on here. I'm gonna try and get my coins back though. All right, I'm safe. Although there's that yucks. Whoop! Oh wait, oh, I have to go back in this room. Okay, my my bad. All right, so if we go back in here now, and oh, oh did it too early. Okay, if we go back up here, um. Ooh, what am I doing here? <laughs> uh, this is the vent you want to go down into, but if you go further to the right, there's another vent that leads to another room, uh, which is kind of useless actually. But more importantly, there's a star piece in this room! One more to go. Let me first show you where this vent leads into. Yeah, it goes into here. You can actually stand on top of these conveyor belts. There isn't anything up here that I know of. It's just something interesting that you can do uh, if you'd like to. And now I gotta get past, past that yucks again, just because I wanted to show... Where is it? Where is it? Just because I wanted to show where the heck the ventilation led led to. Um, uh, whoops, one more room over, excuse me. Uh, the whole ventilation thing is a puzzle in itself, in that, it, uh, <laughs> in that it's based off of observance. In that the um, they want you to count the rooms in order to figure out which vent drops down into the room that you need it to, and the one that you want to drop down into is, of course, the teleportation room. Wow, that was close. Really, really close. Alright, I don't care about the coins, just going in. The yucks is by far more difficult to avoid. Ah! Dab, dip, dab, dip. <laughs> more difficult to avoid than anything around this area. Alright, so, just go down here, and there's your gear. I think you can either get it with the Yoster or by using Coops. I'm gonna use Coops. Boop. Yeah, I got a cog. Now I can use that for the machine upstairs. Now, if you go... Oh, there it is. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, wait, that's right. You have to use the control panel. Always the control panel. All right, now let's go back to sub-level one. I'm gonna go play a crane game to finish off this part because it has the absolute final star piece ever. Oh no! <laughs> 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 
No! Uh, oh. I wonder if I should try stealing their items, like, with Miss Mouse. Like, I, I have... Every time I tried stealing items with Miss Mouse, it's failed me miserably. <laughs> so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take out that front one, and the other one should still have their items, right? Yep, that's what I thought. Alright, here we go. Miss Mouse, you better steal that item now, or I'm gonna be very, very disappointed. Alright, kiss thief, right here. Press A to stop the gauge right after it goes past, okay. Oh, is that gonna do it? Nope, not gonna do it. Poopers. Alright, I'm gonna do this one more time here. I'm sort of cheat this. Because if I run from the battle, they're not gonna use their item. And I'm gonna be able to collect my coins again! <laughs> Alright, one more time. Let's do it again. Oh, I should have done a first strike like I did before. Because I would, then I would be able to run without worrying about them using their items. Well... <sighs> here we go. Kiss Thief. Okay, I'm inside the range. It failed again! <laughs> ah, please don't use that. Ow. Please fail. Don't stun both of us. Well, oh, it didn't stun Miss Mouse. I'm okay with that. Because <laughs> that's who I need here. To keep trying that kiss thief. Work, 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 work. Seriously, why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> eh. I got plenty of HP here, so I can mess around. Another kiss thief. Let's do it. Why? I know you can steal it from them. I know you can. I know you can. Oh wait, maybe you can't. Am I full of items? Is that maybe why I can't? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, okay, that explains a lot. Oh, by the way, I don't, I don't remember if I mentioned, but the space food, when you're in outer space, it recovers 50 HP instead of the usual five. It's the only item in the game that changes properties depending on um, the location that you're at. Yeah, I'm using a stopwatch even though it didn't work anyway, even though it's a good item, because I just need to make some open space here in my inventory. Maybe that's why Kiss Thief was failing me before. Will it work now? Yes! I've shown the Kiss Thief! I've finally done it! I'm so proud! It's unbelievable! I never thought it would happen! It's like a dream come true! <laughs> Love slap. Filled up. I'm filled up. Woo! And it'll be done next turn. I'm just finishing off this battle just because. It's not really that difficult of a battle. And one more love slap. Feel the power of love. And the battle's done. Alright, so I finally demonstrated the Kiss Thief, and that does explain why it might have not worked before, because my inventory was full. Alright. I can sleep now. <laughs> oh, one thing that I forgot to mention, I mean, not, not forgot to mention, excuse me, well, I did forget to mention it so far in this part, um, is that I made a mistake on uh, this badge, the first attack badge. You can use a first strike to defeat weak foes without battling, but I described it completely wrong. So yeah, if you like uh, do a hammer attack on a regular Goomba or something like that, like, you know, outside of battle, do a first strike, regular attack hammer, or a jump on the Goomba, you won't battle it. You'll just kill it right off the bat, but you don't get any experience points or anything like that. Uh, anyway, now, Cog, go in place. Now, right here, you've got three switches. Remember the configuration was left, right, middle. Uh, I don't I don't know what happens if you do this wrong, though. Uh, I, I guess you can't do it wrong. You can see that? It just turns off the one you already did. And yeah, it's otherwise, if you didn't have that configuration, you'd have to do this by trial and error. But there's only six combinations of this. It would be like you would try that one, then you would try this one, and you'd be like, oh, that's not the correct one. Then you would do this, then you'd do this, and you'd be like, oh, now I found the right one. <laughs> So you didn't necessarily even need um, that left, right, middle sequence whatsoever, though it does save you a little bit of time. 
All right, here we are at the crane game. The crane will move left for as long as you hold A, and the crane will move backward for as long as you hold B. Use the crane well to get the stuff you want. All right, I'm gonna hold A. This is like the cheapest game in arcades ever. <laughs> it's like it never grips the plushie that you want or the box that you want, but here it works pretty well. <laughs> Guess this is like a high-tech crane game. Not meant to scam you. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure some crane games are meant to scam you. Feeling fine, partner badge. This is a pretty handy badge to have. Alright, there's the regular feeling fine badge, which I'll be, be getting really shortly. Um, you can tell where the crane is above just by looking at its lights. Like, you can see a circle of lights where it is. And just try and get the, whatever you're trying to grab in the middle of said light. Just release it. Uh, when you're in the middle of something and use the coins as sort of a guide as well to try and get what you want I don't know if you get anything if you get all the coins as well I'm unsure if you get something if you get all the coins as well as the rest of the stuff is what I'm saying I really don't feel like getting all the coins right now because it's really time-consuming so I think I'm just gonna leave that and uh, uh, maybe look into it a little bit later but for now I'm gonna get all the good prizes from this crane game here. Like the final star piece. Just look at it. The last star piece you'll ever see. Well, I say should say last star piece you'll ever have to collect. It's it's incredible. It's gorgeous. I, I think this is too much pressure. I, I can't. There's something right near us, sweetie. She's talking about this last star piece. I just, I can't do it, it's, it's too much pressure for me to get this. Coops, could you get this for me please, thank you. <laughs> there it is, the last star piece is in my possession now. Yes! Satisfaction! To the teleporter! And here we are. Now, why am I using the teleporter? Well, that's because it's very, very conveniently right over by Dazzle, which has the very last things we have to buy from his uh, star piece shop here. So, let's do it. See, got 11. 4 plus 7 equals 11. Take the peekaboo badge. And I'll grab the happy heart badge. And he is now cleaned out completely. Yes! Thanks to you, guy. My uh, same. Repeat, repeat. Maybe we can trade again sometime. Yeah. You don't have anything more to trade for, and I don't have any more star pieces to. Ah, okay. <laughs> so yeah, if you go in your inventory here, oops. Let's go over here. Zero star pieces. You will never see another star piece again. Yes. And with that awesome completion note, I'm gonna end off the part here. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next part. When I start the next part, I'll be at the save block back at the x Fortress, by the way. So, go traverse back over there if you don't mind. Okay?